Okay, so I got the Godox V1 Pro in. Um, I did order that little remote to the three, um, but it's on back order already. I thought I ordered it quick enough, but I guess I didn't. Um, I'm really excited about that one. I, I don't, you know, just because I use Profoto doesn't mean I don't like Godox. These are amazing flashes. No ifs, ands, or buts. The original V1 I, I did not like because of the color shift. Um, this one, I think they corrected it. It seems like they did, but I won't know until I pull the pictures in. Um, the little flash on front, you know, some may think it's a gimmick. I actually use these quite a bit when flashes had these before. Um, you know, I just dial it all the way down and just add that little kick when I'm bouncing. Uh, but so many of the venues that I shoot now don't have any ceiling to bounce, so it's not really, you know, that big of a deal. Um, I did try the Profoto uh, accessories on here. They're a little loose. Um, it seems like they widen their... Um, mount just a little bit not that they won't fit the original godox accessories like the dome and so forth um, but it was it was a less wide of a mount so the pro photo ones fit a little bit better they still work um, but they're not quite as tight quite as firm now um, the first thing i had to try with that flash was ttl directly on the camera it, ttl worked fine um, and then with the remotes, like I'm, I have, <laughs> um, this is the Pro Photo for Sony. This is the Pro or the Godox for Sony. This is the Godox for Leica. Now I tried the Leica remote with a new one on TTL on the M11. It doesn't work at all. Um, TTL does not work. And I did update the firmware to the latest firmware. I still can't get it to be even somewhat accurate. If I use the Pro Photo uh, A10 with the Pro Photo Connect Pro, on the M11, it works fine. TTL works great. Uh, TTL with the Leica remote, and it doesn't work. Anyway, um, but, and then I used the remote with the Godox. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I couldn't shoot in TTL what, using the remote and the off-camera flash. Um, I don't know why. Again, I didn't read instructions, and I probably have something set wrong. Not a big deal. I would have shot in manual anyway. So I use the Angler. Um, this is the Angler 24 inch. Um, I love this box. It, it's, you know, it's the same thing as the Pro Photo, um, or the Pro Photo is the same as this actually. Uh, this thing works great. I have no issues with it. Um, this is just a nice soft box. And this is the new mount with this to hold it in. I don't know if you need it because it, it is deeper. Um, it's deeper than the original one. So it does really hold the flash well once it's mounted in there. Uh, but this is a nice upgrade. It's the, the V1 version. I believe this is just a, actually this is a multi version. So this one will hold the Pro Photo A1, the Godox V1 and the V1 Pro and the AD100 Pro. Uh, so. That is a nice upgrade because uh, it is deeper and it does have the security lock. Uh, so that I love. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm just going to do the shoot uh, and, and see how it does. I'm using just the V1 Pro, um, the Angler, and I'll do some on camera TTL so you can see what that looks like as well. Um, but And then I'm using the X-Pro 2 for the Nikon. And the body is the ZF and I'm using the 51.8. I love this combo. Um, the, it, it's really working for me. Um, and that's it. Um, I'm just going to shoot at ISO 100 and 200, give or take. Now, I got to say, like, I'm so used to just setting the flash sync speed at 250th <laughs> and I'm not even, you know, understanding <laughs> that this is 200th, because um, I'm so used to like 180th, 250th, 200, you know, but I just set it to X um, on the on the dial um, and, you know, it synced at 200. So that was my error in the start, because again, I'm, I'm new with the ZF. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think I ever set to X on any other camera before, but this one I just did and it worked fine. Anyway, let's get to the shoot. I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching as always. And let's see how this V1 Pro does. So I'm going to start off the shoot with it on camera and I'm using the Nikon ZF and obviously this is the Nikon um, version of the V1 Pro. Um, 
it's the, I love the manual TTL switch on on the flash itself versus going into the menu. Profoto has that, um, and it really is handy. Um, again, always shooting a great card. I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm just going to shoot it. Um, I want to shoot full length. I want to shoot close up with the on camera just to see how it looks. You know, it's pretty damn accurate on the ZF, on the Nikon ZF. I can't, you know, say anything about any other cameras, but uh, on the Nikon, the TTL works great. Um, off camera, I set it up. I, I picked up the Leica version of the X Pro um, with this uh, V1 Pro, and it didn't work at all. Um, but on the Nikon, it works great. Now, I did put this on off-camera flash. This is what it looks like straight out of the camera without the flash, just so you know what it looks like. Um, but, y you know, it's it's producing great light. This is in the um, softbox. Um, that softbox is fantastic, by the way. Uh, it's just as good, if not better, than the Profoto version. Uh, because of that locking system they have on there now, um, it is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I there's really not much to say about this. I, I rapid fire quite a bit to see, you know, if it overheats or anything like that. I had no issues at all. Um, I had a couple misfires only when I paused for a little bit um, and I started shooting. It, the remote has to be woken up first, so it's not like you can just press the shutter to wake it up and take the shot at the same time. Um, you have to wake up the remote first and then take the shot. Uh, so, you know, either, you know, wake it up or set your, t you know, um, sleep time just a little bit longer than I had it because uh, I had it to go off quick. Uh, other than that, it was smooth. It was a great shoot with this. And I, I have to say that that new insert for the V1, uh, the AD100 and the Profoto A10, uh, it's all in one now. And it has that locking mechanism mechanism on it, um, and it's much deeper. So it's a really nice um, uh, adapter uh, for the Avenger softbox. Um, it, it just works. Now, like that's straight out of camera, and you know, I'm, I, obviously, I'm shooting it in manual, so it's you know, it's not like a, a big big thing. But the coverage I'm getting with that little 24 inch softbox. Um, and the light that I'm getting from it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I, I just had no issues with it. Uh, and, you know, from using the original V1 uh, to this one, uh, this one is much better. Um, I can't pinpoint things like, oh, it's this is better and they improved this. I don't do it like that. I just shoot. Um, you know, this is real world. I'm just shooting the hell out of it and it works, <laughs> you know. If you need more technical stuff than that, which I really honestly don't know why, um, you know, I'm sure there's other uh, YouTube channels that'll give you that kind of stuff. Now, like I said um, in the beginning, that flash in the front of the V1, the new uh, add-on, you know, that I'm actually going to use. If I am shooting um, and bouncing off a ceiling, you know, versus, you know, using a bounce card or something like that, I... There was flashes, the older flashes always had those, and I didn't know why they got rid of them um, because I used it all the time. And I dial it all the way down as low as it can go uh, to add the fill, and it really works well. Um, by the way, this, I'm using the grid, and I'm using uh, two black uh, cards on either side of her uh, just for a more dramatic light. That's all. And, you know, for the next one, I'm going to take off the grid again uh, so I can get full coverage. Um, you know, because she's on the floor and I want, you know, I just want to get full coverage of the light. The, I'm shooting at ISO 100 now. The flash is probably set at one quarter. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little ambient light, but not enough to make it a great picture. So, and you can tell, you know, by the pictures, it's, uh, it's really good coverage. So, you know, I know that everybody wants the big, big soft boxes and so forth, but this thing, I love this little 24 inch because it works for me. Um, not only can I throw it in a stand easily, but I can also handhold it, you know, because it has that built-in handle. It's a nice little system. Um, I think I have them in my Amazon, just in case you want to you know, find them. Uh, but I'll leave everything I shot with today in the Amazon link in the description. Um, but you can find it on your own, of course. Uh, but yeah, these are, uh, it's a great light. And I, 
other than the, you know, wake up misfires, I didn't have a misfire throughout the whole thing. I didn't have any overheating issues. Um, I did take it up to half power and full power a couple times, um, just to rapid the fire, not to shoot with. There was nothing. There was no problems at all. Um, color seems fine. I, like I said, m well, a lot of these are right out of camera, so I didn't even color correct. I didn't even use the gray card to color correct. I just <laughs> figured out, just pop them off and, and show. I did, you know, retouch, um, uh, her face a little bit cause she would kill me if I posted these without retouching her face a little bit. Um, but believe it or not, I can actually retouch a face without color correcting and doing other stuff to make the images look, you know, better. Um, cause I really want you to see what, what this flash can do and this little soft box. But anyway, I hope this helped, um, make your decision on the V1 Pro if you know, for me, it would be an absolute definite upgrade over the original V1 because of the color. It does seem a lot better to me, um, but that's just my personal opinion. And it works flawlessly. So, um, hey, hey, well done, Godox.